So I hope that you have answered all the 10 questions within 15 minutes. Uh, let us see the solution for this uh, video. That is the part 14 of ISRO Technical Assistant Mock Test Examination. Okay. So the first question is optical fibers are preferred as communication links for lasers because they are. That is optical fibers use lasers for communication. Why uh, in optical fibers lasers are used? The correct answer is option B. In order to ensure that the beam does not spread. So, while discussing the optical communication uh, uh, formula revision video, we have discussed about lasers and LEDs. So, we are always preferring laser for long distance uh, transmission or communication. Why? Because laser is emitting more coherent light. Coherent means it is confined. It is not spreading. Whereas in case of LED spreading is there, both of uh, the LEDs and lasers emit monochromatic radiations. But for long distance communication, we use lasers or lasers are pref preferred uh, in comparison with LED. Okay, Because they emit coherent light. That is, they ensure that the beam does not spread. The correct answer is option B is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. The minimum cutoff frequencies for a rectangular waveguide are obtained when we know that the minimum cutoff frequency is for the dominant mode. Okay. So, in a lot of previous videos while discussing about rectangular waveguides, we have discussed that for a rectangular waveguide, the dominant mode is TE10. This is the dominant mode. Now, if the, uh, the mode T10 is the dominant mode, then T10 means generally you can write TEMN. Then M is equal to M is equal to 1 and N is equal to 0 here. Right. So this is the case. This is the value for M and N. And also we know that for a rectangular wave, right? The dimensions are like this. There is a wider dimension, there is a narrow dimension, right? This wider dimension is A. And the narrow dimension is generally called as B. So, here A is greater than B. So, the conditions are for the minimum cutoff frequencies of rectangular waveguide are obtained when A is greater than B. Because A is a wider dimension, B is a narrow dimension. And M is equal to 1 and N is equal to 0. For this mode, for this conditions, the mode is the dominant mode. And for the dominant mode, minimum cutoff frequency is present. Right. So, the correct answer is option B is the correct answer. The next question is uh, regarding an amplifier with a feedback. The voltage gain of an amplifier is 100. A negative feedback is applied with beta. That is a feedback factor equal to 0 0.03. The overall gain of the amplifier is dash. Okay. So, this is a very simple question. For a negative feedback, the overall gain overall gain is equal to a by 1 plus a beta. So, if it is a positive feedback, this is 1 minus a beta. Okay, here it is 1 plus. What is a? That is the uh, gain without feedback. It is 100. 100 by 1 plus 100 into 0 0.03. That is 1 plus 3 it is. So, you will get 100 by 4 which is 25. So, this is the Overall gain of the amplifier with feedback. Correct answer is option B which is 25. The next question is from transistor session. If ICEO equal to, ICEO is a collector emitter leakage current. It is 410 microampere and ICBO is 5 microampere. IB is 30 microampere. Then collector current is dash. So you have not been given the value of beta here. You only, uh, that is you are being only given ICEO, ICBO, two leakage currents and the base current. You need to find the collector current. The equation is ICEO, first we need to find the beta, only then we can find IC. So, ICEO equal to 1 plus beta into ICBO. This is the relation. Now, from this relation, you can find the value of beta. Substitute ICEO as 410 micro ampere equal to 1 plus beta into 5 micro ampere. Micro and micro get cancelled. So, 410 by 5 is 
82. So 82 equal to 1 plus beta or you will get beta is equal to 81. So you have obtained the value of common emitter current gain beta is equal to 81. Now we need to find IC for that we need the equation IC is equal to beta times IB. This is a general relation but if you are given, you are being given the leakage currents then you have to take ICEO also. Okay, so this is the equation. So beta IB plus ICEO is the total collector current. Substitute and find the value of collector current. 81 into IB is 30 micro ampere plus ICEO is 410 micro ampere. If you solve this, you will be getting 2.84 milli ampere is the value for your collector current obtaining. Correct answer is option D is the correct answer which is 2.84 milli ampere. In PCM system, the amplitude levels are transmitted at 7 bit as 7 bit code words. So, each uh, code word is having 7 bit. The sampling uh, is done at 10 kilohertz. So, sampling rate is FS is 10 kilohertz. Bandwidth of the system is dash. The equation for bandwidth of a PCM system is N into FS by 2. Okay. Here N is 7. 7 into FS is 10 kilohertz. 10 into 10 raised to 3 by 2. Or you can put it kilohertz itself. So, it is 7 by 2 is 3.5. 3.5 into 10 is 35. So, 35 kilohertz is the bandwidth. Correct answer is option C which is 35 kilohertz is the correct answer. Next question is again regarding uh, bandwidth channel capacity that area. A radio channel has bandwidth of 10 kilohertz and a S by N ratio of 15 dB. So, it is given in dB. The maximum data rate that can be transmitted is dash. So, maximum data rate is equal to the capacity of the channel according to the Shannon Hartley theorem. This is the very famous Shannon Hartley theorem. C is the capacity, B is the bandwidth, 1 plus S by N. This is not in dB, it is in ratio. But here the S by N is given in dB. So, first you have to convert that dB to ratio. So, 15 dB is actually equal to 10 log 10 S by N. From this you need to find what is S by N. Okay. So, it is 1.5 and in order to find the value of this, you have to take S by N equal to 10 raised to 1.5. Okay. Raised to 1.5 that is 31.6 is the value for S by N. So, the first step is to convert S by N in dB to S by N simply ratio that is signal to noise ratio. Okay. Then you have to substitute it here. 31.6 plus 1 B is 10 kilohertz that is 10 raised to 4. Okay. So, you will get C is equal to 10 raised to 4 into log to 1 plus 31.6 or 10 raised to 4 into log 2 32.6 and if you solve it you will get 50.3 kilobits per second. Okay, so this is the ratio, sorry, this is the maximum data rate or this is the channel capacity which is actually equal to the maximum data rate. So, this is the relation R should be less than or equal to the channel capacity. So, maximum up, up to channel capacity is possible. R is a data rate, C is a capacity. This is a relation between the data rate and the capacity. Correct answer here is option D is the correct answer. Eight, uh, question number 8 and question number 7 are two theory questions. Question number 7, a bistable multivibrator is frequently used for TASH. Correct answer is for a regeneration of distorted waves. So, there are basically three type of multivibrators, S-stable multivibrator, mono-stable multivibrator and bistable multivibrator. For a S-stable multivibrator, there is no stable state. For mono-stable, there is one stable state. For bistable, there are two stable states and it vibrates or it shifts, uh, level shifts between these two states. Okay, 
Now the use of a bistable multivibrator is frequently used for regeneration of distorted waves. In order to regenerate some distorted waves, we use bistable multivibrator. Correct answer is option B is the correct answer. Question number 8. A waveguide section in microwave circuit will act as dash. Whether it act as a low pass filter or a high pass filter, what is the uh, basic working of a waveguide? We know that whether it is a rectangular waveguide or a circular waveguide, there is some cutoff frequency for that waveguide. And only if that cutoff frequency is achieved, the waveguide will allow the waves to pass or that modes to pass. So, it will only allow after the cutoff frequency. So, you can think it of a or think it as a high pass filter. Okay. So, only after the cutoff frequency is allow, achieved, it will allow the waves to pass. So, it is a high pass filter. Correct answer is option D is the correct answer. Number 9. Determine the bandwidth occupied by a sinusoidal frequency modulated carrier for which modulation index is 2.4. So here only modulation index is given. You need to find the bandwidth of FM modulated wave. Okay. So according to Carson's, Carson's formula, the bandwidth is 2 into delta F plus FM. Where delta F is the maximum frequency deviation. FM is the modulating frequency. Okay. Or in terms of uh, your modulation index beta, you can write it as 2 FM into beta plus 1. Here only beta is known, right? So 2.4 plus 1, that is 3.4 into 2 fm, that is 6.8 fm, where fm is the frequency or modulating frequency, okay? So 6.8 times fm is the bandwidth of this particular fm modulator carrier, okay? Correct answer is option B is the correct answer, which is 6.8 fm. Next question is a, again a theory question. So you should be studying the ripple factor and efficiency of half wave, full wave and full wave with center tap rectifiers. Okay, So these questions can come as direct theory questions. You should be knowing the figure. The maximum efficiency of a half wave rectifier is dash. Correct answer is option B which is 40.60 percentage is the maximum efficiency of a half wave rectifier. So, this efficiency and ripple factor of these three categories of rectifiers are very important. Anyway, here the correct answer is option B. So, these are the 10 questions which I have included in this video. So, I really hope that you found this video useful. Please do share it with all your friends who are preparing for technical assistant examination. Uh, so, we have done 13 other parts also. Please do watch all those parts. It's been, uh, it's been given in the uh, mock test series playlist. Okay. So, I am telling it again, if you found it useful, please do like it, please do share these videos and if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.